Sometimes on SAT math, they ask for something a little weird. Not what x equals or what y equals, but some strange combination of x's and y's and whatever. And that might make this seem, uh, might make the problem seem more difficult, but actually there's usually a shortcut on those problems when they're asking for something weird. Let's look at three examples. So before I do these examples, if you want to go ahead and pause the video so you can try the question yourself out first, highly recommended. So go ahead and do that now. And so welcome back. Let's go ahead and reveal this question, try it out. So we want, the, we have the system of equations. We have 3x minus 3y. You know, I could do it the normal way. I could solve for x and solve for y, or I might notice a little trick here. Let's double this bottom equation. So let's rewrite it over here. 17x minus 9y equals 12. And negative 14x plus 6y equals negative 12. And so here's the trick. They just want 3x minus 3y. So can we get it directly? We can. Go ahead and add these equations. You get 3x minus 3y equals 0. And there you go. So if you did it the long way, it probably was annoying. Uh, but you can get the answer. It can definitely work. Um, but if you want to do it the short way, here's the best way to do it. So when they're looking for something weird, see if there's a little shortcut. See if you can just add them or do a simple operation to combine them to get what you're looking for. Here's another question. Go ahead and try it out on your own first, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, welcome back. So here, again, you might be tempted to solve for x, and then when you find x, cube it to get the answer. But can we not perhaps just solve for x cubed? Can we do that? Let's see. Well, let's combine like terms. Let's simplify this. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, foil this out or expand this out. So we get 2x cubed minus uh, 6x squared plus 5x equals 48 minus 6x squared plus 5x. OK, very good. Well, if I subtract 5, 5 x from both sides, those will cancel. If I add 6 x squared to both sides, those will cancel. Hmm. And so I'm left with 2 x cubed equals 48. No reason to solve for x here. I mean, you can if you'd like, but we can just go ahead and divide by 2. And we get x cubed is 24 straight away. And that's choice D. Last example, go ahead and try this one out first. So here, if you tried to solve for x or y or t individually, you can't because we've got three unknowns and two equations. So we can't get x and y directly, but the question doesn't want that. The question wants x divided by y. So can I get x divided by y? Well, let's write out my equations here. I've got 4x plus t equals 10y, and then I've got y minus x equals t. Well, I'm tempted to just make a substitution here. Let's pop that in for t. We'll get 4x plus y minus x equals 10y. Combine like terms, so I'll get 3x on the left and 9y on the right, and here we go. If I go ahead and divide both sides by y, those look like x's, let's try, make those a little cleaner. Divide both sides by y, I'll get 3x over y equals 9. Now, either divide both sides by 3, multiply both sides by 1 third, whatever you like, Either way, you get x over y is 3, and there you go. So when the SAT math is asking you for something weird, not x, but x plus y, or x squared plus x or something strange, sometimes there's a shortcut. And so go ahead and look for that shortcut. See if there's a, a substitution you can make or a quick uh, co combination of the equations, something that can help uh, get to that answer more directly. And it can save you a lot of time and a lot of effort.